So do you get a few nice spring days outside, but the very next day can be much different. Anyhow, let's get back to the build. As I mentioned, I've been tearing apart my turbos, which occasionally involved a bit of brute force, but once I did finally get them taken apart, it was time to clean them up. With the turbos all cleaned up, clocked, and reassembled, it was time for Jordan to test the wastegate actuators. After a slight adjustment, we got these bolts to crack open right at 11 psi. Aside from the turbos, I've also been spending a lot of time welding stuff on and off of the car. A lot of my time over the past few weeks has been simply putting things on to check for fitment and then modifying and then again checking for fitment, but essentially that means that after I put it on, I have to pull it right back off again. So next up I'm going to talk about my radiator configuration. I've had to make a change in order to fit the charge pipes over the radiator and into the throttle bodies. So that meant I had to get a little bit creative with uh, mounting the radiator. So as you may have seen I've been working on this bracket here and what this bracket does is it, uh, it sits right here and just bolts on right there and then Basically there is a mount right there for the radiator, so I'm bringing it forward a little bit, and one on this side for the radiator. And the real trick, and I talked about radiator hoses earlier, but essentially bringing the radiator this far down meant that there's not really a good option for this hose. And I will show you now what I came up with. So these are just two 90 degree silicon couplers. Um, this one's been cut down quite a bit. This one's been cut down a little bit. And inside here I have like a two inch aluminum um, charge pipe hose, essentially. And these two clamps will hold those on. I'm not gonna use these cheese grater clamps because I care about these hoses. I'm gonna use uh, these type of clamps, but just for mocking it up, I had those on there. So coming out of the water pump here, the size of this is a little bit smaller than the inlet on the Griffin radiator, so I need a little bit of an adapter. So what I've chose is to use this adapter um, and I cut it down a little bit just so it'll fit. And then when I put that on there, these 90 degree elbows just work exactly so they're not step down ones. You can also get the step down, which I have used before, but uh, in this case, um, I just wanted to keep it the same. So that's how I will run that. And I could always change my mind. I have one of the step down ones, but um, for now, this is what we're going to use. And you can see in there, there is the aluminum pipe that is holding these two together. So it's kind of a weird angle, just S this way and then this way. So that's why this is actually going to work really well for this application. I'll probably keep a couple of these uh, spare on hand just in case I ever do have any problems because it's not something you can just pick up at a parts store this exact size. So 
that'll be handy but yep in order to get the radiator this low in order to send the charge pipes over top and right up here to the throttle body that's uh that's what i've come up with all right so i've been working on my turbo oil drain um, it's going to go from my scavenge pump into the oil pan and i've got a few tricks and words of advice for you so i'll start out with what it takes to just remove the oil pan on your eg33 impreza and i actually think um, and I've read that this happens in the SVX as well. So, if you have a look over here, you'll see that I've got my engine attached to the crane here. And that is because I had to pull the engine mounts out in order to get the back three bolts of the oil pan off. So, if you can kind of see back here, there's basically like two inches that I had to lift the engine from there to there and that allowed me to undo the back two bolts to take the oil pan off. So then once I had the oil pan off I can essentially just drill a hole in the side of it. Now it's nice to look at the oil pan and kind of get an idea of where you're going to put your oil drain, oil return, uh, while the oil pan's still on the car. So that's what I did and I settled on in this location right here and what I've done is take a stepper drill bit and just drill the hole. Now it depends on the type of oil return that you're going to use. You could use the type where you just drill a hole in the side of it and then you tap it and flush a bunch of oil through to essentially get all of the uh, metal chunks out of there. Um, but that's not what I'm going to do since it is actually possible to take the oil pan off with the engine installed. As I've shown here, what I've gotten is this type of fitting where essentially you have a large bolt and you just really clamp it on there really tight. And this is a 10AN fitting on this side. And so I picked my spot, I drilled a hole with my stepper drill bit, and then you can see this big fitting fits right in there. And then what I'll do is on this side, I will have to really clamp down uh, really clamp down the bolt on this side, the nut on this side I should say. And then when it's all said and done, it'll look something just like that. Now I've chosen a spot that will allow for a very flat uh, ceiling surface and it does, this particular fitting I got on eBay and it did come with these uh, ceiling washers here that you can really clamp down on and I think those will work out pretty well. So, this is the mess I'm currently in. Uh, next up, I mean, I've flushed a lot of the um, bits of metal out of the pan from when I drilled the hole, but there's probably still a few in there, so I will go through and do it again. But I figured I would take my, uh, basically just my wire wheel here and get all of the RTV off that I put on in a previous episode. And once I get that off, I'll essentially do the same thing again, you know, follow the fluid packing technique that is in the service manual for this engine, and then I'll go ahead and delicately reinstall the oil pan. And I'll probably go for a couple of the bolts that are easy to get at before I do these three tough ones in the back here, just because it'll be a lot easier to do that, um, you know, get those ones started. And I'm going to leave the engine uh, jacked up where it is right now. So. If you're putting an oil pan uh, return for your turbos in your SVX EG33 oil pan, this should help you out. It's actually looking like it's going to be fairly straightforward even though you do have to get a bit dirty to do it. I wound up cutting the upper radiator support. Uh, without this support in place, the front end became very flimsy. So I decided to weld on a bracket that would hold it in place lower down to strengthen it back up. Next up I tried fitting the couplers for the intercooler piping into the throttle bodies. So what I've just done is install the two couplers and the associated clamps on the EG33 throttle bodies here. These are two and a half inch uh, couplers and mine are getting reduced down to two inch because I'm going to be using two inch from here forward. But 
This is actually a lot more challenging than you would think. So just to get these on here, I basically had to put some dish soap or motor oil on the inside of the coupler and force it on there, which got it on there. And I found it actually easier to do, if you put them both in at the same time, because I'm gonna put them in two times now, um, and you just make sure these are pushing together while you're forcing them both in, that works a little bit better. And these are kind of important, um, you know, couplers. You don't want these to be messed up at all. I do have these other ones that I ordered, which are pretty much the same thing, except for these are four ply. And these ones on here are three ply. So just look on eBay if you're gonna buy these. Um, you can search and see three ply versus four, four ply. And again, these are two and a half to two inch reducers that I'm using. And they originally came with these clamps, which are nice, but the real problem is pinching them in here, right? So there was, this was never designed for that thick of a coupler. The EG33 intake is actually pretty small. That's thin rubber there that goes on there. So getting those two on was tough, but even harder than that was getting the clamps on. And as Skylar Hansen pointed out, uh, once you get one of them on and you clamp it down, then this side um, will be slightly easier to get it in there just because you know, you're now pinching down the diameter of this essentially the you know circumference is becoming a slightly smaller when it's under load from this clamp so put one on tighten it down then try to work the other one on and what i actually had to do was completely loosen this up and make it kind of straight so that way i had the most amount of leverage to get it in there let me show you what you don't want to do is you don't want to really force it on there and you'll have that clamp digging into your coupler that would be the opposite of what you want to do so just be careful. Um, I was pounding on it a little bit, but I found that it wasn't necessary to pound on once I just completely opened this clamp up and then basically used the leverage of each side of it to wiggle it on there. So with a little bit of motor oil in there, uh, I was able to get it on there. So I wish you luck in doing the same thing. That actually probably just took me about an hour. So um, harder than I wanted it to be, but I don't anticipate taking it back off, so that'll just be another tip for you when you're assembling your EG33 twin turbo setup. That pretty much wraps up this episode of Easy on Cars. Stay tuned for me to give you an update on what I'm doing with my iris valve, as well as how I'm welding up my intercooler piping. Take it easy, easy on cars.